What's up, you guys? Welcome to a replay of Wave Race Blue Storm. I've already done a Let's Play of this game, but in celebration of Wave Race, I'm doing it again. So we got Ryota Hayami returning from the first game. Um, he's still pretty much the best. David Mariner, the fat guy from the first game, also returning. He is still the best for setting world records. Akari Hayami from 1080 Snowboarding. A little bit different look to her. Nigel Carver, a brand new character who replaces Miles Jeter from the first game with his crazy handling. Ayumi Stort returning from Wave Race 64, looking a little bit different without a helmet. Rob Haywood from 1080 Snowboarding. All muscle bound now. Ricky Winterborn kind of knocked down to a little kid from 1080 Snowboarding. And Serena Del Mar, another new character who handles similar to Miles Jeter as well. So, speaking of that, let's be Nigel Carver. Let's do it! Let's do it! And do the exhibition match. This is what I did in my Let's Play. I picked Nigel Carver and then Ryota Hayami, I believe. But I think we're gonna go David Mariner this time. But, that's for later. Nigel Carver time. Welcome to Dolphin Park. This is day one of the circuit. Hello, Nigel. Uh, this is Terence. I will be monitoring the race from here in the pit, just in case you get into any trouble, right? So, um, all sorts of luck, eh, lad? Hit the gas just as the light goes green and you'll get a boost off the line. Game Boy Band signs everywhere, man. It's awesome. Three, two, one, go! It's a very arcade-like, loud game. So Terence is our crew chief when we're playing as Nigel. He's the Australian sounding dude. So what's cool about this game though, is as you do stunts, you rack up your turbo meter, which was just maximum power in the first game. So when you get maximum power, you can use it for a turbo boost. And while you're doing that, do a stunt like I just did. We'll do a can-can the other way now. So it's a cool way to chain strategically turbos together. Last lap. There's a whole lot more stunts in this game too, because you can hold B now. Before it was all just control stick motions. So now you have those plus the ones where it's like the same motions, but you're holding B while you do it. Like the can-can. Your boat is now turbocharged. <laughs> I love that line. Smashing. I like the Game Boy Advance advertisement. There's Dr. Pepper, Slim Jims. O'Brien jet skis, bell helmets. There's all kinds of uh, things going on, which makes me wonder if they ever did make another one. What would they do? Well, let's do the normal five-day circuit. Hope for we some cool weather options. I love the way his song starts. Uh, food. David Mariner, here we go. Sunny day one. Why not? Lost Temple Lagoon. You could change it up. You pick. That's what's so cool. You could change the order of the courses in this game. You don't have to always do course one is course one. You know what I mean? Welcome to Lost Temple Lagoon. This is day one of the circuit. We have an absolutely gorgeous day for a race. Gorgeous. These small waves shouldn't be much of a problem for our racers. Racers, take your start position! Yeah, this guy's kind of loud. In my other Let's Play, I was a little bit obnoxious about it, though. You fly off the line! Let's do it! Three, two, one, go! Mo! I like that noise that he makes. You got the turbo, man! Here it comes. He's gonna say it at least once in this race. Yeah, I'm uh, capturing this a little bit different. Hopefully it comes out all right. I'm using a retro tank. You're about two seconds ahead. Okay, buddy. You've got turbo power. Crap. 
Yeah, this guy's notorious for his wide handling, but it actually feels better in this game. It's easier to get used to than Wave Race 64. Yeah, my other Let's Play, I captured this using an AV to HDMI upscaler, but it stretched the left side of the screen and made a fisheye effect, which luckily in these racing games, where you're mostly going forward into the picture, you don't notice that as much. So I don't know which of the two would be a better capture option. for the big man yeah whatever he's talking about there i don't know as a kid i thought this guy was cool he has the coolest music and his crew chief was just a dude bro there you go on to the next one surfer dude kind of thing all right light rain uh i think ocean city harbor turns into storms under light rain it starts off as just light rain but it gets stormier as we go and I always like to choose the courses according to that mechanic. Like, for example, rain turns into storms on Aspen Ocean Lake. City Harbor. This is day two of the circuit. We've got some cloud cover for this evening's competition. Let's see how the racers handle these heavy waves. Racers, start your engines! Weather's getting rowdy, dude. Keep it slow around the corners. Three, two, one. It's kind of neat how the three, two, one thing changes depending on the course, too. But yeah, I'm ready for uh, this franchise to make a comeback. Like, now's the time where we gotta push for it if we have any say in the matter at all. Though I hope they do some middle ground between this one and Wave Race 64. Because Wave Race 64 definitely has the better music. But this one has some cool mechanics and they fleshed it out and the weather system is really awesome. So... Yeah, something in between all of that would be really cool. But I say now is the time to make the push for it because they just released Wave Race 64 on Nintendo Switch Online. So everybody's remembering it now. So it's... <laughs> the big guy doing stunts. The ramps of this course are kind of dangerous. Sometimes if you hit them and you're not holding back on the control stick, you'll just lose balance on your jet ski. I never can tell when it's a good time to hold on to the turbo for maximum speed and when's a good time to use it. Like, is it better to turbo boost all the time and just keep re-racking it up strategically? Or is it better to maintain maximum power and only boost on straightaways where you rack up buoys? Alright, sunny day three. Next day stormy, so yeah, let's do Southern Island which was always the final course in Wave Race 64. I like what they did with it here, though. It's still pretty much the same thing. Southern Island. This is day three of the circuit. The weather doesn't get much better than this, folks. With these small waves, we can expect some high-speed racing. Racers, start your engines! 
Still got the submerged pirate ship. And as the laps progress, the water level recedes, the tide goes in. Yeah, on normal difficulty, the ramp is right there over the dock. But I think on hard and expert, it does the Wave Race 64 thing where it's further back and you have to dive under the dock. Yeah, now we gotta jump the ship. So still very much the same on normal difficulty. On Expert, it brings you way out and around the pirate ship thing. And the ramp, of course, like I said, is back. Yep, nothing like early morning racing on a jet ski. It's early morning for me right now. Might be why I'm a little quieter than usual, but I think that's a good thing sometimes. I'm trying to read all the, uh, the sponsors on his jet ski. All I see is Slim Jim all the time. There was something about it, like jet something. But it wasn't jet ski. That's how to get it done, bro. Keep rolling. Yeah, they could do more to flesh out these characters, I think, too. But yes, Stormy Aspen Lake. I love this course. This is one of the best courses in the whole franchise. And really any weather condition, it's awesome. Welcome to Aspen Lake. This is day four of the circuit. We're experiencing severe storm conditions today. The waves are small, so our racers shouldn't get tossed around too badly. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines! These are kiddie pool waves, Dad. Nothing you haven't seen before. Three, two, one. So the only thing about stormy conditions. This is probably the easiest stormy map. Let's try to make the jump. Yeah! What I like most is the dynamic weather. So like I said, when you come here under just normal rain, it starts off just lightly cloudy with a little bit of a drizzle going on and it just ramps up into storms and that's so cool. But when you come here with storms, by default, it's just always this, which is still awesome, but it doesn't have that dynamic feature to it. Oh, jeez. But yeah, could you imagine a new wave race, the way that they, they can render water now? Like, what if it looked like Sea of Thieves, kind of? That sort of ocean. That'd be so crazy. I like that section, though, with the ripples coming in from that little waterfall. We did it. I doubt I'm ever going to set any kind of record because I messed around with Action Replay quite a lot with this game. And there's uh, a heavy boost code or something. Infinite boost. Here we go. Time to go big. Yeah, this crew chief guy gets a little bit annoying, I suppose. <laughs> Sunny final day, Arctic Bay. Kind of one of the more bland. In my course ranking video, I put this at the very bottom because there's not much going on to it, especially on normal. Arctic Bay. This is day five of the circuit. It's a clear, beautiful night for a race. These small waves shouldn't be much of a problem for our racers. 
Racers, take your start position. The sky is cool though, and the little Borealis effect in one of the corners. For all the marbles, or the marvels, whatever. I probably should have held on to that turbo for this. There's a long section with nothing going on, so you want top speed for that, I would imagine. So there you go, that's pretty much the highlight of this course, when that iceberg falls down. There is a really cool tunnel, but you only go into it in expert mode. Well, there's this jump, too. where you can do the can-can, or the Superman. Okay, buddy. You've got turbo power. I would always advise against barrel rolls and flips because they slow your forward momentum down. You're about two seconds ahead. Well, the barrel roll doesn't, but when you land, you kind of come to a full stop. So those B-button tricks, the can-can and the Superman, are definitely useful. That's it. All right. Good job. Keep off the turbo, man. A little Superman there. Yeah. We did the can can last time, so I figured. Okay, buddy. You got turbo power. We'll skip this buoy on the final lap. Gonna get some rubber banding, probably. Two laps down, one to go, and it's party time. You're about one second ahead. But you see what I mean? It's just kind of like straightforward. Not too much going on here. Well, the, the boat will blow its horn at you, apparently. But I like it, though. This game is fun anytime you just pop in and uh, relax to very much like Wave Race 64. Watch the replays too. Save the replays, save ghosts. Oh wow, I did get something. Well, uh, Ace, I probably, this is my dog's name when I was a kid. I tend to put those initials and stuff. Let's see what the other records say. Yeah, I did, Ace. Huh, that's weird, I guess, it, well, I just got done saying Arctic Bay wasn't my favorite, so I probably didn't replay it much, even with action replay codes. That was sweet. You dominated the circuit. You ready for the next one? Presenting the champions of the circuit. He says it's so weird. I like that logo, though. The logo is kind of cool. Yeah, this is where some of the, like, the presentation value, you can kind of see it's cheap. Presenting the champions of the circuit. But I still enjoy it, man. In third place, Akari Hayami. Looks like they favored the 1080 crew this time. Ricky Winterborn. Yeah, compare him to 1080 Avalanche. He looks so different. David Mariner. David Mariner, the chubby guy from the first game. Or technically the second game. Wave Race 64 is... Iteration number two of the Wave Race franchise. The first game was on Game Boy. It was a top-down racer. But there you go. I might do Hard and Expert again. Just redo the whole Let's Play. I'm not sure what I'm doing exactly. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully it's a little bit calmer than my original Let's Play. But yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Take care.